You're listening to The Thrive Podcast, where every week we dive into a practical, tactical tip to bring you from a life of simply surviving to thriving. It's personal development for the everyday girl who is done with coasting through her days, done with feeling like she's missing out on the deeper meaning of her own life, and done with mediocrity once and for all. Because it's not enough to simply survive, you deserve to thrive. Hey friends, welcome back to Thrive. I'm here with my friend Michelle of beautylifecoach.com. She is a motivational speaker and a new podcaster hailing from Texas, and she is the sweetest soul who I have been friends with for quite a while now after meeting on the internet a few years ago. So I am so stoked that she is joining us today. Michelle is so passionate about cultivating hope and helping women just like you discover their worth and live their dreams. So I am sure today's episode is going to light or relight a fire under us all. Make sure you're subscribed to never miss an episode, rate and review if you love, love, love listening to Thrive. And now, welcome Michelle. Hey everyone. (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so glad to be here. I love Erica. I was just telling her how she's been such an inspiration by her saying yes to her dream and just inspiring people to live with passion and to thrive. So I can't wait to dive in, get deep, get real, be transparent, and really give you strategic tips you need that you can use today to really see your life change for the better. So... Amazing. And I think you all, you can tell Michelle's energy level is just like mine. So this is why we're friends. (laughs) And we had to hit record because we were talking before recording and the truth nuggets and the truth bombs and everything just kept coming. And we're like, wait, 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 we have to start recording because this is good stuff. So, so stoked to talk to you. It's been way too long, girlfriend. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. It's been way too long, but I can't wait I'm I yeah I'm so glad you press press record because I feel like other people need to be in our conversation because there's so much happening so much good and change and shifts and just like arising and awakening and you know all the all the verbs all the words (laughs) oh my god I love it so Michelle (laughs) kick us off give us your story tell us all about you your family, your life, your work, and what you are up to now. Because I feel like every time we talk, you are like moving and shaking and doing something totally new Uh, and totally exciting. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. Um, I can't wait to share. So you guys, we're going to get real and raw super quick. I am a mom of four. All the children. (laughs) All the children, all the children. I uh, struggled with infertility for four years and then... Um, when I literally was praying and I, I literally told the Lord, I said, okay, God, I know we're called to be parents, but, um, if this is not like the traditional way of getting and having a baby is not in our cards, then I know that I got this phrase that adoption is not a last resort, but a first priority. And so with my husband, yeah, y'all, it's so true. Like I just got goosebumps. Ah! (laughs) It's so true though, but. No, well, literally, and then I this this phrase is gonna like bless you so much. Then I went to my husband. And I said, "Babe, you know we've always felt called to adopt. Um, you know, adoption is not our last resort, but our first priority. And that there's babies with our names imprinted on our hearts that were created for us to be their parents. And so having that revelation and perspective, we went all in. I gave up that dream and of having my own, like birthing my own children, and we went all in. We did foster to adopt. Um, crazy timeline. Like, let me just give you guys this crazy timeline. We said, yes, our dream. We worked for six months on getting all the paperwork. Um, the week we were finishing the paperwork, I, um, studied to be a speech pathologist or speech therapist. I did that for years. Now I do motivational speaking and life coaching and blogging. But, um, I was at one of my houses and the CPS worker, I was at a foster home and CPS worker came up to me and was like, um, asked me about my son. It was my son now. And I said, um, Hey, you know, I love him. I'm going to dismiss him. And she looks at me and she's like, Oh my gosh, do you want to adopt him? And which is so crazy, like crazy favor. And no one, like if you've ever been in the foster and adopt system, 
I weren't, we weren't even done with our paperwork. It was illegal for her to say that. <laughs> I was like, going to say, that is not how that works. <laughs> that is not how it works in any way, you guys. So you just got to know the favor of God and, and saying yes. And so I was like, oh my gosh, yes. But I need to ask my husband and talk to my husband because this is a huge deal. So we finished our paperwork Friday. Then on Saturday, we met. Um, we went to Chick-fil-A. My husband met. Jaden, my son, for the first time, our son for the first time. And after 20 minutes, I look over and my husband's crying. And he is, he is like an outdoorsman. He does not cry ever, but he's crying. And we're like, oh my gosh, I'm like, babe, why are you crying? Well, then he has the ugly cry, he has to go to the bathroom. And when we leave that meeting, he tells me that after 20 minutes, he knew that was our son. And we had finally found the little boy that we were looking for. Like our son, not little girl, little boy. We didn't know, but we finally found our child we were looking for and, and praying for. And uh, fast forward, this is so crazy all the time. It's so crazy. Fast forward, nine weeks, he moves in. Um, and I find out that I'm nine weeks pregnant. <laughs> and it's so crazy because we gave up that dream. We tried four years. And then, um, so um, the day timeline, the reason I said something about timeline is because the day we said yes to our son, is the day we conceived that same day that and is crazy i know it doesn't even make sense it's crazy it's so god like no one could plan that or perceive that was going to happen but the moral of this whole situation is that on the other side of your yes there is always breakthrough and blessing so if you just say yes to your dream like we're starting quick and and deep but um that has been such the the really the mantra I live by say yes, whatever's in your heart. And there's always breakthrough and blessing. So fast forward when my daughter was 15 months, we got pregnant again, miraculously. And then when my, um, my second daughter was four months, we got guardianship of my niece. So in four years we have infertility. And then in four years we got four babies. So that is crazy and amazing. <laughs> you know what I uh, love funny. about this though? This just uh, made me think of a podcast episode that I was listening to literally yesterday. So wow, what crazy timing. But it was they were talking about how sometimes all it takes is surrender and how for so for mm. so long, so many of us can push, push, push for what we think we want. And then we fight with God and we're like, God, why aren't you giving me this? Like, I want this, you know, the desires of my heart, like give it to me. And we forget that our timing is not his timing and our timing is not perfect timing, but his is. So sometimes it takes (laughs) surrendering and being like, you know what? Maybe what I want is not best right now. Maybe like, it's still a desire of my heart, but maybe it's not your plan right now. So, you know, as the Lord's prayer says, thy will be done. My hands are up. I surrender. I give it to you. And then that is like something clicks sometimes. And then when the timing is right, it's revealed to us. And like, look at that. You've surrendered what you thought was your dream. And you were like, you know what? I'm going for what I feel like God is calling me to not knowing if you would ever be pregnant or have that happen. And then, you know, he was like, you know what? Yeah. It is, it is the plan. Like, <laughs> so You're it's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's so much freedom in surrender. Um, and in there's so much hope after your yes. And as you face a fear, not knowing, we didn't know when we were gonna get placement with our son. We didn't we didn't know, but we said yes. We didn't we couldn't see what that future held, but we just took the steps and said yes. And um I I love that you were just listening to that yesterday and um specifically now with business and with what we're doing in life and everything. Um about beauty life coach, obviously the past four years, five years, that's been five years, things have transitioned and I've grown so much as a person and realized um, so much about who I am and how to relate to people and how to love others. And, you know, when you go through stuff, you have grace for others and you realize maybe, maybe I should talk about this. Maybe this could help someone overcome and see, see light in, in the dark moment and, Maybe this is just a moment and it doesn't have to define the rest of my life. Ooh, uh, that is so true. Oh, uh, and uh, yeah, that's why, you know, we just teach our children that and um, and just teaching our kids to say yes to their dreams. So um, it's been such a pro- process and I, I'm just really, one thing that I have such peace with is that 
people are just going to see sometimes it's messy. Sometimes it looks different than I expected. Nothing is perfect, but I am in a process and I'm, I'm progressing and people are going to see that. And even though in the mess, they might not understand what's really happening, what you're really doing, but when you continue moving forward, they're going to start seeing shifts and changes and it's going to empower them to say yes. It's going to empower them to arise. And um, so that's kind of what's been happening with Beauty Life Coach. I did, I've been doing blogging and um, for a long time, kind of vlogging. And I went, kind of shifted from fashion to beauty. And now the, it's shifted so much in this family and home, but also all about empowering, like what I said, I just like what I say, like discovering your worth, knowing your purpose, arising and saying yes, at such a time as this. When so many people need hope, it's so important that we do our part and, and empower them to say yes to their dreams because people are waiting on us to say yes. They're waiting on us to inspire them to move forward. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what my whole thing is about now. Um, so definitely yeah, go check it out and follow along and um, I will do my best to inspire you to live life to your fullest. So... <laughs> I love it. How did you yeah. get in? How did you get started doing that specifically? Like you're in the motiv the motivational speaking world now, and yeah. now you're starting Discover Your Worth podcast. So what what made you do that specifically, and like say, and say yes to doing that as your job? Oh uh, well, um, in 2011, I was in my master's program for counseling, and then I just didn't feel like it was the right fit. And so I started doing research and I discovered a life coaching program that I really felt like was what I was supposed to do. And so I became a certified life coach. Right after that, I was asked to be a um, spokesperson for an anti-bullying organization called Medal of Integrity. And then for two years, um, I traveled around Texas, speaking in schools, speaking at organizations, talking all about how to live with integrity. Um, and how to teach bullies to know their worth and purpose. That's, that's been following me my whole life. Um, and even the reason I started is because, getting, let's get deep real quick, ladies. Um, I didn't grow up a Christian, and I um, didn't have any worth, purpose, or identity. And I struggled with depression and suicide, and I didn't feel enough ever. And I was molested by seven men. You know, you, you name it, it pro I probably went through it or, you know, it was really crazy. You know, we all go through crazy things, but it's what we do with those things that, that define who we're going to be and what we're going to do. And I could have let it defeat me and make me feel like I was not enough and stay in that vein and that I, that, that be my identity, that I wasn't enough and that I deserve to be treated like a piece of trash because that's what happened. But I experience I had an experience with God I had an experience with the Holy Spirit where I gave my life to the Lord and I realized that that was literally that was the love I've been searching for my whole life and it shifted everything and I knew that my mission in life truly was to bring hope to the hopeless and truly set women free to never feel what I felt or go through what I went through and uh, know that they had a choice to know their worth and say yes to their dreams. <laughs> That's incredible. Incredible. So what do you think is the best way if we're bringing it back and going right back to the beginning for people, what do you yeah. think is the best way to approach uncovering your passion in the first place or your purpose and ultimately discovering your worth? Walk us through what that is like. If someone is sitting there and they're kind of like, you know, I don't really know what I'm passionate about, or maybe I have a couple passions. I don't really know what my purpose is. Like, why am I here? What am I worth? Like if people are just kind of like just starting off and feeling a little bit lost or overwhelmed by all of it, walk us through where they, where they start. Girl, it starts with your daily, many minute goals that you're going to set for yourself every single day. This is the tangible stuff that you need to write down. So get a pen and paper out, write <laughs> it down because this is going to change your life. So if you are confused or you're frustrated and you're stuck and you can't move forward because of all the confusion and the chaos in your brain, because you got so much going on, literally get a pen and paper down and write down, put it, line down the paper and write down on one side, 
the things that you love. If it's art, if it's um, movies, if it's whatever it is. And then on the other side, write down the things that you're good at. And then whatever you're good at and whatever the things you love, draw a line connecting those specific things. That in itself will give you such clarity about, okay, oh, I'm good at this and I'm passionate about this. Oh, I love this and I'm good. Okay, well, maybe I have something to say. Maybe, maybe I could turn this into from my passion into my profession. And these are certain things that you can do in order to do that. So once you have that done, but you have to, girls, you've got to do the work so you can see the results and the fruit from your work. But if you don't do the work, if you don't take time and realize that you're enough to take a moment, an hour to yourself and write down specific things that you feel passionate about. And then from those things and connecting the dots, everything's like a, a pattern. Everything's like a puzzle. You got to connect all the dots, figure it out, but it takes work. Discovering takes work. You will start seeing the hidden treasure within you start having clarity. So also statistically, they say that 80% of reality or 80, you're 80% 80 more likely to accomplish your dreams if you write them down. So then start on the next page. You have clarity about what you're passionate and what you're good at. On the next page, write down little goals, steps you could take every morning and every afternoon and maybe every evening that you can do to start shifting things in your life. It's A lot of it starts from the inside. So mm -hmm. if you're confused, we got to really figure out the the triggers that cause you to be confused and then eliminate those from your life. You got to figure out the moments that make you feel overwhelmed and frustrated and really start having awareness like, oh, that that's what brings me frustration. So let's, let's shift and change things in that area so I can be better in this other area. Yes. So you can even begin to think about starting something new. Um, one of the phrases that I, I say all the time is that when there is order, abundance follows. I'm going to say it again. When there's order, abundance follows. So when you have order in your life, order in your mind, order in your home, abundance will truly follow you. Yes, that is so good and so true. <laughs> and I joke with my husband about this all the time because if he always knows when I'm feeling more overwhelmed or my mom especially knows, like if she comes over and my house is a disaster or like everything around me is just a, a total hot mess, chances are it is literally what is going on in my brain just making manifest around me. It's like, it's, it's vomiting out of my mind and it's vomiting onto my desk and onto my floor and onto my bed and onto pretty much everything. So it literally makes such a difference. It really does. And to what you said before with that list, oh my gosh, I love that. because And that is what I always tell people too. Like this was how I figured out my everything in college even like back in the day when people would be like what do you want to do for a living I almost feel like they teach it backwards when you're younger and in school because how you just explained it is like oh my gosh what a perfect succinct way to start piecing together passion and and what you're good at like I feel like nowadays you see people where maybe they're picking a profession or majoring in something in school and then people are looking at them going, but like, what are you going to do with that in life? Or like, but why are you doing that? And people don't really have good answers for no. why they're majoring in something or what their actual aspiration is with it. So yeah. I was like, when I was confused about that, literally in high school, I was sitting down going exactly what you just said, going like, okay, what, for me, it was the opposite. It was, what can I, what am I not good at? Like I, and I was like, yeah. I am, I was like, I can't do blood. I will pass out. Therefore I know that being a doctor is not my calling being, uh, doing I'm anything in the medical doctor. field. Not for me. Cool. And then I was like, you know what? I really don't like math. Like I would rather watch the grass grow. So like probably not going to be like a physicist, probably not going to be an funny. accountant. Like I was kind of weeding my way to like, okay, I don't like these things, so that's definitely not for me. And I'm not good at that, so that's definitely not for me. And then for me, it was literally like, well, I love writing. I love talking to people. I love, well, like, fun hobbies, shopping or clothes or style, like, things like that. And it's funny because if you look at what my life is now, literally a decade ago, it was, like, all the things, just, like, the individual tasks of I love writing. I wasn't saying I want to 
be a be this kind of writer or I want to do this with writing I wasn't putting a box on it I was just saying like you know what I love to write and now look what I do for a living I do something that wasn't even didn't even exist when I was thinking of that (laughs) back then like being a blogger on the internet wasn't a a career you know so that is uh I just everyone needs to write that down and if you are struggling with that do that exercise that Michelle said because that that works Yes. And it brings such clarity to go even deeper. Like, first off, talk about vision, you know, in the Bible, it talks about, um, and there's so many things about like manifesting and vision, but in the word, it talks about in the back, it says, write down your vision and make it plain. So it, it's in your face and it doesn't say in your face in the Bible, but it says, write, write down your vision, and make it plain. But so literally if we put that in our society in this moment, right now, we write it down, we're accountable to what we wrote down. It's not just chaotically in our head and just comes to us when we lay our head on the pillow at 12 at night we're exhausted and then we forget to do anything and then it's two years down the road and nothing's changed no we have it we're accountable we see it every single day therefore we're going to start subconsciously doing things to make the wheels turn to shift things in our lives so we can see that come to pass and that's what you did like what the heck you literally created this job that didn't even exist because you wrote it down and you said, okay, let's do it, whatever. Like, I'm going to just say yes. Even if it's weird, even if no one understands, even if I look weird or, you know, I just feel like that's the thing. Like, even if you look weird, even if you're afraid, just do it. And then uh, like the people who are the naysayers, the people who want to talk you out, they will see, you know, just give it some time. You don't have to prove yourself. They will see and they'll come around. And even if they don't, they'll still be inspired by what you've done as long as you continue to say yes. Especially because you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for you and you're doing it for the people that you will help. It has nothing to do with the naysayers. (laughs) Yes. And I think that that is the greatest, um, another great thing to write down. Um, after you figure out what you're good at, then you need to know, uh, you know, you'll say, you'll hear every motivational speaker, every, you listen to a ton of YouTube on this, but your why, like, why are you doing what you're doing? And I truly believe that to make money is not enough. It's not, you're going to be exhausted. And those days where it's just, Oh, I need to make money. No, that's not gonna be enough. But if you have a why, like I need to make money for my family, let's be more specific and more descriptive and um, dive deeper into that. Why do you want to make money for my family? I want to create a legacy. I want to create Um, this opportunity for my family to see me say yes, so they can say yes. I want to change the future of next generations. Or I, you know, one of my whys is I don't want any woman ever to feel what I felt, ever to go through the lack of confidence that I had or suicidal thoughts or depression. I want to be the catalyst of hope, the shift and change for them to arise and be propelled forward. So everything I do needs to align with that. And it'll give you clarity, it'll give you purpose, and it'll give you the endurance you need to continue moving forward. Okay, so if someone listening is on this journey, but feeling like they lack clarity or lack the confidence to follow their dream and say yes to something that feels bigger than themselves, so maybe they know what they want to do, but they're just scared or they're not confident in it. Do you have any sort of strategic tools or tricks to help? And what advice would you give? Yes, absolutely. The first advice I would say is that we got to renew your mindset because we can, I can give you every tool, every worksheet that you could want, but without a renewed mindset, you will circle back around the same mountain of disbelief, doubt, fear, and anger and resentment, whatever it is, whatever mountain you're going around over and over and over that is holding you in place um, without a renewed mindset. So in order to get a renewed mindset, you got to write down the truth. So we do another, I love doing like the, to show you the beliefs and the lies that you're believing and then the truth. And so what you need to do is get that piece of paper out again, get that pen and, and paper out and start writing down. And you're going to, on one side, write the lies that you're believing about yourself or things that were told to you that are not the truth. And a lot of times we align with lies for 
like our whole lives. And those are the things that hold us back. One of the lies that I believe that I was, and I, it was that I was not enough. And I would make decisions based on that lie, not even knowing that I truly believed how deep that was, but it shifted who I was and it brought fear and doubt. And I just never felt enough. And, um, if anyone questioned what I was doing, it would, it would like dive into that, that same belief. So, um, but, and then, so you're going to write down the lies, then you're going to write down the truth, and then you're going to go and search out scripture to align yourself with the truth. And then you're going to have this paper. So let's say you say, I don't feel good enough. Or like I was, I was in an abusive relationship and I was told you are never going to be successful. You are worthless. You're ugly. You're whatever, whatever it was. So many things like, thank God that that stuff has been wiped from my memory because I've renewed my mind so much. It truly will happen. Um, but I literally sat down, wrote all these lies out. And I said, well, I believe the truth is that I, I am loved because in the word it says you are loved, you're accepted, you're redeemed, you're set free, you're um, called and created on purpose for a specific God-given purpose. You're thought of for millions of years, even before you were born, like God knew you and loves you and calls you by name. And so, um, he's our father. He's our friend. He's the love of our life and, and the Holy spirit and Jesus will be that for you. And so, um, anyways, best advice, write down the lies, some, then write down the truth and then back it up with scripture. And then when this is, this is a strategic step. What you need to do as you want to move forward is you're going to go throughout the day as you do this activity. It'll take you about an hour, but it'll change your life. You walk throughout your day. Okay. You carry that journal with you. It could be a dollar general journal. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And when those lies start arising in your heart and in your mind, then you get that notebook out, put it in your face immediately. And you start declaring the truth and you replace the lies with the truth. And as you do, it's a battle that God has won on our behalf, but we are here right now having to overcome the habits that we've developed unintentionally. And sometimes they were put on us or just different things that we believed. So we got to overcome habits. So that's how you do it. You battle it with truth and you align yourself with that. And I just want to challenge you to do this. I want to challenge you to do it for the next 21 days. They say it takes 21 days to 30 days to break a habit. So do it. And don't allow yourself to say one negative thing about yourself or others for the next, you know, 21 to 30 days and see how your life changes. Just see, and then write me and let me know. And I can't wait to help you go and get the next step, but you got to renew your mind so you can be the person you need to be to sustain the blessing that's coming your way as you say yes. Yes. I love that. And I want to add on to encourage people too, because if someone, I feel like there may be some people listening where they're not really sure if something is a lie about themselves or not, because it is so ingrained in their mind that to them, it feels yeah. like truth. You know, like yeah. I know so many people where they really do, for example, believe that they are just ugly people and like really think mm. that that is just a fact and don't see how crazy untrue that even is. So if you need to take a step back even and just write all of the negative things that pop into yeah. your mind about yourself, whether Every you negative. think they're true or not, and then now through the next step, you'll basically uncover what is truth versus lies if you're taking a scriptural approach like that. But it's like, oh man, I feel like it, it could be really, really powerful and overwhelming and sad, but enlightening to see how many yeah. negative things we harbor and hold on yeah. to about ourselves and maybe aren't even realizing it, that it's something that yeah. you're carrying with you as a belief about yourself. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And just even to add on to that, there's, um, when you go through this process, you're, you have to be really vulnerable with yourself and mm -hmm. you have to be really raw for you to truly see change. And a lot of times that's, that's hard. It's challenging. It can be emotional. Um, but one thing about emotion is that it is never, it, it's good as long as we don't dwell in that emotion of sadness and we don't dwell in a certain emotion, um, for too long. Cause it's motion that is literally given to us. It's a gift that is used to compel and propel us forward. 
So we have to continue seeing, you know, when we have emotion, we got to move, have motion and move forward. But Ooh, also one of that. the best, yeah, thanks. My, be- one of my best friends preached on this and Sarah, but the, the, one of the best ways to move forward and have motion in your life is through forgiveness. And, um, you guys, as you write these things down and realize that, oh, hey, maybe my brother said this and it's affected me and it's been a, a, a belief I believed or my dad or my friend or whatever it is, whoever it is in your life or yourself, you got to forgive yourself for holding on to these beliefs, like the belief that someone might think they're ugly or not smart. Um, that stuff is just not the truth. Um, even if you believe it's your truth and you believe it for so long, Um, and so forgiveness is the greatest gift you can give to yourself because it gives you the power to be, um, released from a prison of, of literally you, you imprison yourself as you are, are not willing to forgive and you, you're released as you give like, um, as you give forgiveness, like if you can get that mental picture, unforgiveness chains you and binds you to the past. As you forgive and literally it's your released from the pain and the past that has held you back for so long. That is the key that's going to get you out, out of the door of um, shame and anger and bitterness. And you're going to see such shifts and changes in your life as you day to day forgive and, and decide to say yes and move forward. I love that. So talk to <laughs> us about obstacles because we know they pop up. Especially if, if we're getting on a journey that is in motion, we're moving forward, we're getting past those, those limiting beliefs, we're shifting our mindset. So the obstacles are going to come, they're inevitable. What are some yeah. real practical ways that listeners can approach obstacles to overcome them? Um, that's such a good question because I have a testimony and a story to share with y'all and to show you that. Um, every time, here's the thing, no matter what, every time you decide to move forward, there's going to be challenges and obstacles that come. There's going to be bumps in the road. So just expect, not that you're going to expect the worst, but just know, Hey, okay, there's going to be challenges in my saying yes, because, um, that is just what happens in life, but you're equipped to overcome them. And for instance, um, my husband, I haven't even told you about this Erica, but Um, three months ago, my husband went to the doctor and we found out that he had a fatal ulcer. He had had been dealing, yeah, it was so crazy. He'd been dealing with it for, um, for, we didn't know what it was, but he'd been having pain for like years. And we finally went to the right doctor. We were, we did not stop until we figured out what it was. And it was called a fatal ulcer and where it's placed is in between like the stomach and the intestine and. Um, there's a little spot and the ulcer was so big and, in that same spot, there's these, these arteries that run that are, um, very important to our bodies. I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you exactly what they're called, but, um, there is an artery that runs in that area that if the ulcer would have eaten through the lining of the artery in three minutes, my husband would have been dead. Oh my and God. Crazy. That's why it's called a fatal ulcer. So the ulcer, this is the miracle. This is like the, the, the challenge and the obstacle that I've had to overcome literally within the last few weeks. And so the, the ulcer, it's a miracle. Didn't eat through the artery, which it should have It ate around into his pancreas. And it didn't make sense. The doctor said, we don't understand how you're alive. You should be dead because we don't understand how the ulcer didn't eat through the arteries. It ate around them. It's like touching them, but ate around them and didn't go through them. So miracle from God for real. But the doctor literally started going and saying, yeah, you're a miracle, but you could die at any moment. You're taking time bomb. And thank God he was able to take medicine. Like it was so crazy, but he was able to take medicine and it's better. And he has a checkup on Monday. So we're going to see, you know, what things are happening. But, um, okay. That's a huge obstacle. Your husband the doctor's saying your husband could die at any moment and yeah. he's 36 years old and you have four children and you're building a life together and you're like building your business and you're starting all these new things, these projects. Like what the heck? That'll, that'll stop you quick. And, um, 
the way I was able to overcome that is I, um, it was a process. Uh, I got a little bit of PTSD. I truly did. I got really afraid. I didn't want him to leave. I, I did. I was like, you know, the doctor said you could die at any moment. Like, I don't want you to leave. I don't like, you know, fear arose, doubt arose, all these things arose, even though this is my, this is my life. Like I teach people how to overcome this. And then I'm faced with the most tragic situation ever. And, um, and the way I was overcome it is I took massive action and I went to, um, a Christian counselor and cause I believe we all need a little bit of maintenance. We all need a little bit of help. And oh, preach. I didn't know, I didn't know how to overcome it on my own. And no one had gone through that specific thing. I felt, I felt alone. I know there was people who were struggling, but so y'all, I went and I got tuned up. And in that moment, I literally got freedom. We prayed. It was like a three hour session. And I just was able to share my fear and be transparent and raw and real. So what I'm saying is that when an obstacle arises, don't run from it, face it head on and be transparent, raw and real. And don't live in a false reality that these things are affecting you. The reality is bad things happen and there are obstacles in our life and things that we don't expect arise. But if we pretend they're not happening or act like it's not a big deal, then we will, that, that will literally forever hold us back. But if we face it head on and we say, Hey, I am so afraid. I'm frustrated. I don't know why this would happen, but I am going to choose to face it. I'm not going to be afraid. And we're going to go through this together. We're going to take every step we can to show our children, Hey, we're not going to be afraid of this. We're going to, we're going to go to every single doctor. We're going to pray what we need to pray. We're going to say yes to Jesus. And we're going to believe that God is good. And that is how we are. We're still in process, but how we are overcoming that. And sometimes you're overcoming this. And sometimes your breakthrough is a daily mantra is a daily saying, okay, I'm going to overcome. I'm going to get up today. If you are so sad or you just went through something and you're so overwhelmed and you can't even get out of bed, just say one thing, declare one thing like you can. Okay. All I know is that God is good and that he loves me. And I'm going to, I'm going to stand. I'm going to today, you know, then the next day I'm going to get out of bed and I'm going to make, I'm going to, I'm going to make my bed. You know, the small victories lead to the great huge success. So it's in the little daily routines where we see the massive shifts and changes in our life. So don't, don't despise small beginnings. Don't delay on facing a fear or an obstacle head on because it's in those small acts of faith and courage where we truly see shifts and changes in our life. So powerful. So good. I hope everyone took notes on that. It's so true. Mm. And something you said stood out to me too, in terms of just keep believing that God is good. And I want to elaborate on that a little bit more too, because I feel like oftentimes, especially in today's society, and you and I see this all the time from what we do for a living, people will have something good happen and then immediately say, oh, I'm so blessed. God is so good. And it almost creates like this misconception in the world that you do something and therefore God blesses you with something that you want or you, these like big material things or answered prayers is like God showing you that he loves you, which may be true to an extent because of course, you know, like we believe blessings come from above. God blesses us all every single day, but we can forget that even in our darkest moments, even in our lowest moments, even in the really, really hard stuff, the truth is that God is still good and he is still there. And it's yep. pretty much as simple as that. So even if we yep. don't in that, even if we in a moment are having the absolute worst time of our life, that does not mean that we are any less loved. It does not mean that we are any less blessed than the girl next door who's on Instagram talking about how they just bought a half a million dollar house and got new jobs and got pregnant on the first try and have all of the blessings in the world bestowed upon them. That doesn't mean that she's any more blessed or any more loved than the rest of us. So it's like, regardless of what obstacle you have in front of you, there's, there are certain truths that still remain and there will continue to be obstacles and you will never have a life, none of us will, that is without obstacles. 
Right. I mean, hell, Jesus had a couple obstacles and his, you know, like his journey ended. <laughs> you know, like it's just a, it, few. just a few. Like, so I feel like that's just an important thing to remind people too, because the goal isn't to not have obstacles. The goal is to overcome them with grace and with the same victory that we we can overcome them yeah. with, you know? Yeah. And I think what another thing, like what you were saying, that is so good. Um, I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so good. And another thing you were saying, you were talking about Instagram and all these social media platforms um, and how literally the greatest way to stay stuck is to come in and to lose your joy is to compare yourself to someone's false real on their Instagram. Like their yep. false, what does Stephen Burdick always say? He's it's like the it's false like reality, highlight, highlight yeah, reel. Reality. It's a highlight reel. And you don't know, you know, you just talked about a girl who got pregnant on the first try, who, you know, buy a half a million dollar home, whatever it is, you know, has all the, the clothes, all the designer stuff. You don't really know what's going on in her life. You don't know if she's secretly suffering and has no joy, no peace, and that this is her only outlet. You know, we don't know. So never compare. If you, if you, the best way to overcome a comparison is to pray for the people you're looking at. Ooh. Is that God bless them, bless them more. Don't covet what they have. Say bless them more. So God, I thank you for blessing them more. I thank you that everything you're showing me, it's not to dangle it in my face. God is a good God. Everything he reveals to us and shows us not to dangle that that in front of our face. It's to give us revelation that he has more for us and that he wants to bless us and promote us to that. So that he gives us a vision of what's to come. As Ooh. long as you hold on to that and you, <laughs> and you say yes. Like that is reality. Like don't compare your life because your life is to anyone else's. Because your life is so special and unique and God wants to bless you abundantly. As long as you just have revelation of that. Like, no, okay, stop coveting. Don't judge. Don't be jealous. Girl, you better get rid of that attitude because that'll hold you back too. Forgive, unforgiveness, all this stuff. Instead, bless, pray, thank God for freedom and breakthrough because literally that is the shift that's going to, you're going to literally start seeing that. I, I am serious. That, that's a key right there that'll give you such freedom. And you just never know. Like you said, like literally before we hit record on this, you and I were talking and you were saying that I had inspired you with stuff that you are doing and how we, the last time we were together in person and you were hearing about you, my course and my book and then my podcast and you were like, wow, I need to do something. And it's crazy because literally the past couple of weeks, I've personally been feeling so discouraged and was feeling weird on my own purpose and just kind of like, wow, what am I, I was in a funk and I was like, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? Does it matter? And just like all up in my head with it. And then here I, you and I were on Instagram together and I'm seeing you just come, came out with your own podcast and you're doing all these great things. And I reach out, I'm like, Michelle, this is incredible. Like, come on, thrive. People need to hear your story. And here you're like, hell, you inspired my story. And I'm like, what? Like, so that's the thing. Like, you just never know. You could be in this really dark place, but people yeah. are watching and people are seeing how you attack your mountain, you know? Like, people are seeing how you move your mountain, how you approach the climb, and you just never know where down the road someone is going to go back in their memory bank and remember something that you said, something that you did, and be inspired by it in some way, shape, or form, and it's going to help yeah. them approach their thing and it's like when god says he works all things together for our good your bad things might help someone else create something good so it all oh it's like all pieced together in this like really cool really cool way <laughs> hey mystery like all this yeah and i just want to brag on you girl I, oh gosh like no it was so strategic because that uh, you know i was pumping my pump broke we went to a conference together everyone who's who's listening and we went to our conference together and we roomed together and I was just struggling. I miss my baby. I, she was only four months, but I knew I needed to be there. Um, my pump broke. I was you were literally baby. in the shower, like squeezing out your engorged boob <laughs> for your blessed little baby. I'm like, oh, I don't know how Michelle is doing this. 
so bad and I hadn't lost the weight yet. I was like all these struggles. It was crazy. And then it was so cool because I truly believe it was so God that we got to just connect even more and be together in that that moment where I just I felt so sad and and like man what am I doing I have all these kids and, and you know it's weird you get in your head so <laughs> what I am I like, doing I have all these kids I know like, I, 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 why am I here like they need me at home like you know all this stuff well you just get in your head and then I'm like man Erica I, I literally said man she's arising everything you went through with your daughter everything that you overcame and you said yes and you trusted Jesus in that in those moments it was just so just hearing your testimony lit something within me like okay she's a, such an overcomer and she said yes and look at the shift and and truly like your yes has shifted and changed so many people's lives for the better me including like just giving me hope that little spark of hope like okay even though my boobs hurt so bad <laughs> It's okay. Like this is a moment. This moment's not gonna define everything. I just have to keep moving forward. Like we're gonna see, we're gonna see breakthrough. You know? So oh, I just And I oh. love you you said that earlier too. And I'm so glad you said it again because it reminded me that I wanted to bookmark that for people. The fact that you said it's a moment, it's not your life. And so yeah. many times in our darkest moments, that is all we can see. And that is all we are holding on to. And it just all feels dark and all feels hard. And it just, we, we extrapolate that to we're in a bad moment and we're like, you know what? I have a bad life or like, I have a bad everything. And we forget uh, that it's not really everything. Right. It is, it is, but a moment in time in our yeah. life, even if that moment is years, years long, like literally we just, I just talked about, um, my friend Rachel on the podcast with this literally, oh my God, this is like crazy full circle. And she, <laughs> we talked about literally everyone listening, tune into the last episode if you missed it. Cause we talked about the story in the Bible where the Israelites are in the desert for 40 years and it was supposed to be an 11 day journey. So for them, you know, like their moment was really freaking long. <laughs> yeah. So your moment might literally be ridiculously long. It might just feel ridiculously long to you based on how yeah. extreme it is, but we don't see the finish line yet. We don't see the full picture yet. There is only one person who does. So we have to be able and willing to just, even if we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet, to just trust that it is there. And at some point, one moment leads to the next and something will come of it. Ah, I love it. And I want to like know on the Israelites being in the desert for 40 years. Oh, wow. Can you believe it? But God provided. I mean, their shoes, their clothes, their food, God provided. But the reason they say the reason they stayed is because of their grumbling and complaining. And that is why they kept going around the same mountain. They were, they were, a tw on a 12-day trip, they kept going around the same mountain, same wilderness, same desert for years because of their words, their belief, their com their confusion, and what they spoke. Like, y'all, be careful what you say. Be careful what you think because it can, just like what we're, this whole theme, like, it'll hold you back. So be careful. Like, your words have so much power over Truly. your life, over your family, um, and over your future. Yeah. So be careful what you say. <laughs> the truth, even if you're tempted to be angry, whatever. Say, y'all, this story. I know we're, we're probably need to end, but y'all, this is so funny. My husband and I went through so much. This is just a story about how things can shift. We went through so much. Um, we, if if we would have got divorced, it would have been in 2012. We lost or 2011. Yeah, we lost 11 people in our family. We were going through grief. It was crazy. And I was so mad. I'm like, why does he always hurt my feelings? Like, you know, all this stuff about me. Why is it this happening? And, you know, I was just mad. Y'all, um, I felt like the Holy Spirit said, well, it's your fault. It's your fault. You keep speaking that over him. You have authority and I, like over your husband to speak truth and life. And your mouth brings life or death. And so it's your fault. You're speaking all that death. So you better shift yourself, humble yourself, and speak truth. And so this is what I did. I put sticky notes all over the house of everything God had told me about him, that he was a man of my dreams. He was 
everything I had prayed for. He was called to greatness. He was the love of my life. All these promises the Lord had given me about my husband. And one day I was so tired working. I was working six hours a week. I was doing dishes. He was on the couch and he, I just made dinner, all these things. And he said something to me that tried to trigger me into that behavior that I was having. That was not good. It was a nice behavior, you know? And I look over at him about to snap back and I see that sticky note and it says, you are everything I prayed for. And I scream it. I say, you are everything I prayed for like a crazy person and it literally shifted the atmosphere he didn't know what to say because i didn't say anything mean i said something nice and it started being the catalyst that changed everything so it was easier for me to say nice things it was just a process again everything's a process but um that's just a funny testimony about how saying good things will change people i love that. in your situation <laughs> it's so funny i'm gonna have to use that myself next time i find myself uh triggering and instigating <laughs> things in my, <laughs> in our house. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So to close things out here, I got to know what does thrive mean to you and how do you strive to thrive in your own everyday life? Thrive means it's time to arise. You want to thrive. You need to arise in your purpose and arising means you know, having things in order, like when there's order, abundance follows. You're thriving in every area of your life. And when there's something out of place, you're able to see it, have clear vision and move forward. You're thriving every day just by saying yes to what you feel called and created to do. Everyone's purpose and plan is different. And my, what I feel called to do and what I, what God has called me to do is not better than what Eric is doing or what you feel called to do or nothing's every, everything that you do by saying yes and overcoming fear that is thriving. You're thriving just by moving forward. And, um, so girls, it's time to thrive and arise, be all that you're called and created to be. It's your time. I love it. <laughs> Michelle, thank you so, so, so much for hanging out with me on Thrive today. Tell us where people can find you online if they want to connect with you more. Yes, you guys, come and hang out with me. I'm Beauty Life Coach, beautylifecoach.com. My name is Michelle Hammonds, and that's my handle on Instagram and Facebook is Beauty Life Coach. And also uh, my podcast, you can go Ooh. check it out. It's all about saying yes to your dream. It's called Discover Your Worth. And um, definitely come, connect, say hi. I can't wait to get to know you. And thank you, Erica, for letting me just connect with your audience and just have this really fun conversation. Wait, before you go, if you like what you just listened to, drop us five stars on iTunes. Make sure you're subscribed to never miss an episode of Thrive. And if you're on Instagram, snap a screenshot and share to your story with what episode you're tuning into and tag me at Erica Legenza with what part resonated with you the most. That way I can see what's helping you and your friends can pick up a helpful tidbit too. Thanks for tuning in. It's your time to thrive.